111, Station 111, please respond for a structure fire northeast in Langdon. Again, for a structure fire northeast in Langdon. Dispatch clear. Dispatch 111, call. My name is Ron Wenstrom. I'm station chief. I certainly didn't start out thinking I was going to be a firefighter. In the early 90s, they wanted to start a fire service. There was no fire service in the municipality at that point. We were getting fire service out of Strathmore, which at, at that time was very well established over many decades of service. However, the problem with Strathmore is it's at best, 25 to 30 minutes away. In the very early 90s or very late 80s, I think the Alberta government started to legislate uh, certain things about certain levels of fire service that the municipalities had to provide. Then the municipal district of Rocky View hired a gentleman by the name of Pat Graham that was a retired fire chief, or county of Rocky View hired him as their fire chief, and he started to try to put together a fire service. So when Pat, Graham came to Langdon, he was coming through town, he was just going door to door to see what interest there was in a volunteer fire service. So he stopped in and talked to me about if I was interested. And he made it sound pretty exciting. And from there, I mean, I think he went door to door and got a, essentially a group of folks that may be interested. And then they had kind of a town hall meeting. If you're interested in joining the fire service, here's the sign-up sheet at the front. Come put your name on it. And at that particular meeting, there was 24 of the local folks like me said, yeah, you know what, why don't we do that? That sounds like fun, so why don't we sign up for that? And it uh, took off from there. Since then, of course, that's 30 plus years ago, uh, it's developed into more than sounds like fun. Our very first fire chief was adamant about training. In fact, we didn't get to go on a fire call, our very first fire call, till almost two years after we were brought together as a group. From that point in time, we just started working together as a team to train he was a great leader and a great trainer, and we, of course, were fortunate enough to have a few individuals within the department that were, had, you know, had great leadership qualities as well. When we first moved in, uh, I think there was about 80, 90 homes, and uh, I always heard that saying, 310 happy people. I still think we have a lot of happy people here. I'm a uh, third generation Langdon resident. My maternal grandfather came here in 1894. I'm third generation to live in Langdon. My gra grandfather uh, farmed just outside of town here. My dad was born in a house just outside of town here. And I grew up in Langdon and have lived here for all my life. The town, uh, the hamlet, I guess it was a town before, many years ago. Uh, when uh, the railway came through, it was actually a, a th bigger than Calgary, Langdon was. When, that's many years ago, yes. Yeah, it was a, it was a town uh, before it was a, back to a hamlet, which is, it is today still. 
The town itself was just another, you understand, it was a, as the CPR came out west, they move, you know, they develop towns strategically because of the need for fuel and wood, or coal and water with the, with the uh, rail. Every so many miles, they made a town. Well, Langdon was on that rail line, and then Indus and Shepherd and all of the towns through there are, all came from the, the building of the railway. So I'm not, I'm not sure my grandfather came out at that time, but shortly afterwards. And he was living in Ontario at that time, so he moved west to, for adventure. And at that time, people were moving, moving west. In the beginning, we had no place to call home. In those years, we were dispatched out of Strathmore. Rocky View had no dispatch system or structure for that because everything was so new. The county ordered two new GMC fire trucks. And in the, the early months, the county did give us one bay in the Greater Shed. The building that, whether you've been there or not, that's the Greater Shed or, or we shared the Greater Shed. It was property owned by the county, but they had graders in it and then they built a portion on for our truck. They had a greater shed here that had three bays, there was two graders in it, and one small bay that we could back this fire truck in. Uh, it was gravel floor, there was no am amenities at all, there was no washrooms, there was no office there. It was a tin shed, insulated, that was designed to park graders. So our initial fire hall was one bay on a gravel floor in a greater shed. So our station became known as F9 out of Wheatland County. And we stayed F9 for a number of years until Rocky View service matured and got to be a little bit bigger. They added Madden, uh, then they added Iracana. And at that point, we got our own radio system and a little bit uh, better organized. S simply through maturity, uh, through the fire system with the county. Then our next development was an, another truck that we acquired through Chief Graham and the other grader moved out. So the graders are parked outside now and now the fire trucks are parked inside. And we started gathering up more equipment such as rescues and uh, a bush buggy and a mobile command and, and various other things. We were in a, a, a grader shed uh, for 30 years. In saying that, uh, we did have offices and we did have nice washrooms and a meeting room and a training room when the new addition was put on. And I believe it was put on in 2000 or, or 2001 perhaps. And it was pretty nice. Like it was significant improvement over what we had. So it isn't, we weren't hard done by, by any means. It was a great facility, it served us well. We didn't have any problems with it. We just outgrew it. I uh, was always involved with the community quite a bit here, and I was trying to get more stuff done for Langdon, and that's how or Langdon and and uh, Rocky View in my area here. And that's how I got involved with uh, running for council. This is my second term, now, the second round, my fifth term altogether. Uh, there was a few things that I was trying working on to try to get done. One definitely was a fire hall. Uh, in fact, uh, when I was on council before, we uh, council at that time purchased uh, the lot next to the old fire hall, uh, thinking that possibly it would expand. And uh, I just felt uh, nothing got done after I left, so that's why I went back in. Uh, one of my big goals was obviously the fire hall. We were in that facility until this one was built and we moved into this magnificent structure July the 4th, 2021. I'm very happy to uh, say that the fire hall is, has been done and completed. The last council that I was on, when we were looking at the fire hall, staff gave us, I think, three or four different options and we went with the, with the big one. And I'm really glad we did. My name is Randy Smith. I'm manager of fire services here at Rocky View County. I'm also the director of emergency management. 
I've been in Rocky View County for, well, I'm going on my ninth year here in the county and uh, managing the uh, Regional Fire Service. So Langdon uh, is just one component of the, uh, of the fire service here in Rocky View County. Uh, we, we call our, our fire service a, a composite fire service. We have full-time uh, members, we have part-time firefighters, and we have the paid per call or volunteers. They're the drivers in the community for that station because they live there. Uh, they, know, uh, you know, they know what's happening in their community. Uh, but they, again, it's, if you look on the door of their fire truck, it's Rocky View County Fire Services. And uh, they're just one more station in that regional fire service. So yeah, it's, and you know that in the volunteer world and the volunteer fire services, uh, it, it, it's actually, it does give some ownership of the volunteers to the station. And so that it's not just a, I come to work and I do my thing and I get to go home. Because they could, uh, you know, there's enough equipment there and, uh, to do the job, but they, they have ownership. They have uh, some skin in the game in that fire st uh, station. It's a community fire station. The county uh, has given each volunteer station pretty significant room to run the station that they think how they want the station run. Now the county and Chief Smith expects a certain level of service to be maintained, but we're given a lot of latitude as to what do we want to train on, how do we want to train it, uh, the number of members that we need to get the job done that the county expects to be done. We're given the latitude to decide who do we want for officers and who do we want in what position. Uh, the station chief is also the senior fire ground commander within our response area. It's an autocratic system where is uh, leadership is expected uh, and the decisions by the leadership on the fire ground whether it be a lieutenant or a captain is ultimate it's not negotiable we have uh, an outstanding officer group they're all very senior guys that have been in the station a number of years if there's disputes as to it was that the right decision to make uh, that's done after the scene after you get back to the hall. It's discussed at that point. But on the fire scene, whoever the fire ground commander is, uh, his decision is final. It's, it's not negotiable. I, I haven't felt the scene is, has been in jeopardy and a command transfer needs to be done. Right across actually this, this whole area, um, 911 is, is uh, for fire services is dealt through Calgary 911. Whether you're in Langdon, you're in Iracana, or if you're, um, you know, in this building here, if you dial 911, the call goes to a central answer point. It's fire. It will go to Calgary 911. They also dispatch for the Calgary Fire Department, um, but uh, they do the rural as well. And uh, we have a, a regional radio system, and um, the, the stations are toned out based on the location of the call, and then uh, county protocol. So each type of call uh, denotes a certain type of response. A structure fire, just as an example, um, our initial response might be two engines and two water tankers. Um, the dispatch will start to radio information uh, to, the, uh, to the station, and uh, the officers there will, will gather that information, and then they'll start to make um, a call based on their professional opinion of what they need to do to deal with that, because no two calls are the same. The county expect us to be within uh, an eight kilometer to arrive here, dress, get trucks out, and be on scene within 10 minutes at eight kilometers away. Now, of course, many of our calls are less than that, but. That, that's a benchmark that the county has established. And we're well within that. Uh, it's very rare that uh, a paid per call department can do that. But we have a lot of staff that generally lives within mile of the hall. So we're very fortunate we have that volume of people that live close to the hall and we can subsequently hit that target and we've hit that target consistently year after year. 
Typically, we uh, will will run between uh, 40 and 60 percent medical calls, and uh, you can provide uh, life-saving care until the uh, ambulance arrives on scene. The other high call volume is uh, motor vehicle uh, collisions, but we do get uh, structure fires. Well, we're a fire department, so we're expected to put out fires. Now, we're also expected um, to do rescue at certain levels, whether it be farm rescue, motor vehicle accidents, which of course are, are a very common for us to do that, uh, industrial kind of rescues, uh, medical service. Our, our medical service is basically uh, first aid, that's our some life support system, and we, we do have oxygen, we can take vitals, send those information vitals off to dispatch, which ultimately gets to EMS uh, while they're, they know what to expect. But it's primarily fire service, vehicle extrication, highway service, and medical service. Langdon is, uh, is unique. In my nine years here, we've never had a problem with Langdon. They, they are a winning team, uh, perceived in the community. People want to be part of a winning team. Um, and people live and work in Langdon, so we have availability. And so we don't generally have an issue in Langdon in recruiting. In fact, we, we typically will do a posting and we'll you know, get 30, 40 applicants for um, you know, five or 10 positions. Why do you want this job? Um, you know, a lot of times it's give back to my community, um, you know, make a difference. Um, and, and those are the, what you're looking for, you know, that uh, why you want people to be there um, because they want to give something and uh, not just take. It's an awesome opportunity for, for young people to come in and, uh, and, and get into the fire service. What other occupation can you get into where basically you come in off the street if you're fit and uh, you got a clean uh, driver's record, criminal record. Um, you're you're a, an excellent candidate to become a volunteer. Uh, we look for fit, so a team player. But once you get on, the department as a whole provides all the training. And and what a great way for somebody coming into the work uh, the work environment to get uh, you know their first aid training, uh, leadership training, uh, certification. And our Langdon uh, volunteers they certify to national standards, the same as a full time firefighter. It might take them a little bit longer because this is this isn't their full time job. This is something they do on the side, but uh, we do provide the same training. The county funds the fire service, the, uh, the county builds the buildings, they pays the wages, they maintain the trucks, they supply our tooling and equipment and training. Now we have raised a significant amount of money to put into the hall, some for training, most of it goes to equipment and supplies to improve our capability to serve the community. Our primary income source is casinos. Now we do have uh, several farm people and some business people that make annual donations to us just because they think we offer a valuable service to the community. We do have a successful firefighters association which supplements mostly uh, tooling that either the county doesn't have on their schedule to give us or can't afford have the budget for that so we've put in several hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years our association is roughly 25 years old and we have raised a significant amount of money to put into the hall some for training most of it goes to uh, equipment and supplies to improve our capability to serve the community. Maybe they want a second or a third thermal imaging camera. Maybe they want a, a fourth or fifth gas detector and they, and they feel that that's something that's of uh, value to their operation uh, but doesn't fit the, the, the mold, so to speak, for the regional fire service. Then they'll, they'll 
let us know and uh, they'll go out and they'll fundraise for that piece of equipment. In the Langdon Fire Station specifically, they have a, uh, a all-terrain vehicle that you use on grass fires. It's the only one we have in the county. It's a, it's a great piece of equipment, very expensive, and, the, and again, the crews through um, uh, different uh, fundraising uh, venues uh, came up with the money and they, they, they worked with the county to make sure that it, we can maintain it and keep it going after they purchase it, but they went out and got that piece of equipment. We have a lots of, uh, or quite a few activities. We participate in school reading programs. We go to all of the schools in our response area every year for fire safety programs for certain grades that the school administration would like to have. Very, very involved. And they're always involved with the uh, Langdon days. Kids can come up and they have a look at uh, the fire trucks and the fire station. And the last few years also, they've been cook doing burgers and hot dogs for the community. We have our barbecue every parade day. So we will have a, a barbecue here uh, for, we, we feed generally between five to 700 people-ish. So we're set up with barbecues and tents and tables and various things. We, we didn't do it the last couple of years because of COVID, but we're, we're back on schedule hopefully this year if things go well with uh, the COVID situation. They, they've done this for all the years I've been here. They do the Santa Claus run, uh, very, very popular every year. Our Santa run, as we call it, uh, we send Santas and trucks out Christmas Eve, which is a very difficult evening to get people to come out because they have families and some dinners and kids and whatnot, but <clears throat> we managed to pull it off and we send Santas and trucks down every street to talk to every child in the community. Uh, and it's a huge undertaking, takes a lot of planning, but we've done it successfully now for 25 years. But it doesn't cost the community anything, it doesn't cost the county anything. We're doing it through our association funds and some local business support. Any firefighter would be lying to you if he said it wasn't an adrenaline rush for him and that he wanted to get there. Uh, absolutely, it's exciting stuff. You know, you. Where, where can you go and have the county as an example put you in a fire truck and break every rule, rule on the planet to get there? Things are burning and people need your help. They need your help. They don't want your help. They need your help. And you're there to provide that. So absolutely, it's, it's a huge adrenaline rush. And you can be here 30 years. And it's still an adrenaline rush. It does take a fair commitment. There's a fair amount of things that you do to help out. But in the end, I think it's important you, that you'll talk to and, and, and everybody in my family would tell you the, the pain is worth the gain, right? It's, it's, it's well worth the effort. So the story starts, right? <laughs>